My name is Alec Hedikovic, and I will be doing a presentation for Corporate Strategy 462 on Cisco and their acquisition strategy. First, I'm going to talk about their business strategy and how they use differentiation throughout all of these markets and find companies to acquire that to, so they can fit into all these different markets. Their goal is fast innovation. And in, in order to achieve fast innovation, they have to, to have fast IT and SP. And uh, these are just a couple of examples of the markets that they're going into. And by acquiring companies that fit into them, they, they can achieve ultimate revenues and, uh, and integration. I'm going to talk about the acquisition history. In 2015 alone, they've had 10 acquisitions. Now, Cisco kind of reminds me of the pharmaceuticals market right now and how acquisitions are everywhere. And that's their whole business, uh, their mo business model is, is acquisitions. And in 2016 fiscal year, they have already five planned, and uh, I'm, I'm assuming many more. The book states that there's a few reasons for acquisitions. and they, One is to reduce costs, gain market power, increase growth, build capabilities, and manage risk. And I'm going to, to explain to you how Cisco achieves all of these reasons and uh, in how they do that. Now Cisco's old strategy was to integrate companies and install Cisco managers, removing existing employees, which I can't imagine made them too happy. And they removed the acquired company's name and replaced that with the Cisco's brand. Now, that last one there is actually the only one that they have not changed. As uh, I'll explain, and let's take a look at the new strategy. Their new strategy is to retain 100% of the employees who transition from the acquired company. Sustain the acquired company's current product and service revenues, as well as the current levels of service and support during and after the transition with Cisco. With Cisco. Launch new Cisco products based on the acquired products and technologies. Repackage and rebrand an acquired product or technology as Cisco product when appropriate. Now they say when appropriate, no, they, they don't do that right off the bat. They do it when it is economically friendly to them. And I think that's very smart because I think people can get, uh, or companies can get too excited and, and jump into that and, and change the product name. Lastly, integrate the sales channels and services functions of Cisco and the acquired company as appropriate. Now, Cisco has a huge sales channel and, and service functions, so this is very smart of them to, to use their, their uh, capabilities for integration. Now, I'm going to talk about the acquisition process. Now, phase one is discovery and planning. They, they have scope, scope assessment, business modeling, detailed due diligence, and integration planning. Now, detailed due diligence is mentioned in the book by the one of the most important things, and, and that goes to, to one of the risks I'll mention later in the presentation of, of overpaying a company. Now, Cisco does a very good job of due diligence, so they do not overpay for companies. Execution, phase two. Ensuring operational readiness. Activation of employees, resources, and integration tasks. This fits into their new model of activation of employees, keeping all existing employees, and also ensuring operational ready, readiness goes back to uh, applying Cisco's name brand when appropriate. Phase three, monitoring. Ongoing measurement and adjustment of integration activity. Now, monitoring, I think, is very appropriate in, in acquisition, in, in purchasing companies, because uh, you have to monitor that certain company, especially if you're keeping the, all of the the current employees. I think that's very important for success. Now, this is a quote that I thought was important for, for the presentation. The most important benefit of our standard integration process is that we can avoid a dip in revenues. In fact, we can increase revenues quickly by applying Cisco's resources to help the acquired sales team reach their full potential. Now, I'll mention later, that's one of the risks that was mentioned in the book. And, and this is a perfect example of how they explain how they... They reduce that debt when they buy the company. They actually increase their revenues. The integration principles. Alignment. Set common standards so that the internal organizations and integration activities are aligned to achieve the business goals of the acquisition. Communication. Enhance cross-functional communication to highlight interdependencies, overlaps, and gaps in activities and schedules, and to encourage cooperation on integration 
tasks. Operational effectiveness. Continually improve the integration capabilities across Cisco by promoting consistent, repeatable processes that can reduce integration, project setup, time, and assist with the resource capability and planning. Adapting integration standards to accommodate different business models as Cisco acquires large companies and those offering different types of products and services, incorporating the lessons learned from each, each acquisition, which I personally think is the most important one. As I mentioned earlier, I was going to review the acquisition risks that are mentioned in the book. Inadequate evaluation and paying too much, which I think they do a great job of due diligence to prevent this. Excessive debt in the post-acquisition period, once again, by, by being economically uh, ready for that Cisco brand change, I think that they actually increase revenues and, uh, and avoid that post-acquisition debt. Over-diversification. I think that Cisco is very diversified and it would, be, it would be pretty hard for them to get out of their scope, especially they've, uh, they've outlined that very um, directly and I think that they purchase companies that are only in that scope. Managers who are overly focused on making acquisitions. Now this I think could be a risk if they, if they get overwhelmed, but at the end of the day, Cisco's business model is to make acquisitions. And as I said before, they have six in 2016 and have had, uh, you know, already planned. And in 2015, 10 alone, I mean, it, it would be pretty hard for a manager to get overwhelmed and uh, overly focused with, uh, with making acquisitions. Uh, thank you for your time.